Hello and welcome to the GMS Magazine, the board game review room. Welcome to the YouTube video if you're watching it in YouTube and welcome to the podcast if you are listening in iTunes or wherever it is that you decide to listen to this podcast too. And this is a podcast in which we actually review board games because you know, that's, that's what we do. I am Paco Garcia, your host, and today we're going to be talking about Time Stories. Time Stories is a time-traveling adventure fully cooperative board game for up to four players that tells an adventure as the players struggle to keep rounds to a minimum and use time as best and wisely as they possibly can. Designed by Peggy Chazanet and Manuel Rothoy, this clever and rather gorgeous game uses extremely simple mechanics to develop a game that will have you hooked within minutes and make you want to play more and more. The first thing that catches the eye of this game is the production. The box has an incredibly elegant cover with the right illustration and the logo of the game that somehow, and despite its simplicity, or I don't know, maybe because of it, sparks curiosity. Perhaps because just the name of the game is evocative enough. After all, who doesn't like the idea of stories that involve time travel? Inside, the game doesn't disappoint. A large board that continues with the minimalist design from the cover gives spaces where the cards and tokens will be placed and moved throughout the game. The insert is probably the best I've ever seen. The right amount of space for everything the, the game comes with, but also designed in a way that will allow you to arrange the components so you can get back to the game and take off from where you left. The importance of this will become obvious in a bit, when, when I will explain how the game plays. The tarot-sized cards, used to create the locations and maps where the play will take place, as well as the events and objects that the players will have to deal with and use to overcome challenges, are nothing short of glorious. All of them are illustrated truly beautifully with very, very evocative depictions of the locations as well as detailed illustrations of objects. The anatomy of the cards has also been well looked after with both icons and text clear and in the right places. The tokens used in the games are pretty standard. From the material point of view, there is nothing really amazing about them, but uh, the iconography is very clear, and although it doesn't seem to have any relevance to the situations, for example, obtaining a token with four grey squares on it, um, in order to be able to access a certain card, it, it doesn't feel like there is anything that says, oh, um, it's, it's a red token because of whatever. It just doesn't match anything, but it doesn't really break the illusion that the rest of the aesthetics provide, so it, they don't detract. From the game either. Dice are wooden with engraved icons. Uh, the wood goes very well with the player tokens and having them engraved and painted on top of that it's, it's indeed a very very good thing because they will see a fair amount of use. Then we have some cylinders and some stickers to attach to them. Now this was the only aspect of the production that got me by surprise. It, it felt a little bit too cheap compared to the rest of the game. Um, of course, it, it's a means not just to save money, uh, but because the the whole white color, you know, the, the, the dice are white, the tokens are white, uh, to have just one side where you put the color that ident identifies each player is a lot easier to do with a sticker than it is to do with creating a bespoke piece that would cost an awful lot more money. So it, it does surprise a little bit, but Hey, it is a good solution. Uh, let's let's just put it that way. It's, it's not something that should be criticized in a bad way. A gameplay is a lot simple. The it should appear. Um, by reading the rules, um, although the rules have been very well laid out, don't get me wrong, they, they look absolutely gorgeous, but they feel that there are way, way too many rules for the simplicity that follows when you start playing the game. At the start of the game, a number of cards are laid down on the board and a token is placed on the track that measures how much time we have to complete our mission. 
The cards laid on the board will form the image of the location where we as characters in the game are meant to be. And from the moment on, things just look up. Once we are initiated in time traveling experience, we are sent to our location. Simple as that. Then we must choose a, a series of, of characters, each one with their own abilities, to perform the tasks that are going to come ahead. Now, um, revealing what kind of characters and their abilities would potentially ruin the game, um, because it's, it gives away a little bit of the story, and I really don't want to do that because the story is very cohesive and very, very well put together. So I don't want to spoil the game for anyone. The, car, the characters um, will go from car to car from in the location, revealing what happens on that particular spot. Uh, the cards can reveal new locations for the players to travel and explore, as well as challenges, uh, fights with uh, creatures or other people, uh, anything that has to be resolved, and uh, combat has to be resolved with basically opposed roles. Yeah, you, the, the, um, uh, the enemy will get a number of tokens and they have a an attack you have to roll your dice if you roll better than the attack that they have by default then you take away some of the uh, shield tokens that, that matches how hard they are once you get rid of all the tokens then that's it you've, you've won the battle and then whatever has to happen happens because the card tells you exactly what's meant to happen as the players uh, take their actions and agree what locations to visit or actions to perform, because let's remember this is a fully, fully cooperative game, then the time counter moves down until it reaches zero. This is um, basically to prove that everything you do takes time and you only have a limited amount of time to be in this time space. When that time track reaches zero, you get uh, displaced and you head back into your present, so you have to start again. It's basically the way to set up how long the game is going to last. And it works very, very well indeed. Um, now, this is the tricky bit for the game. It is very, very limited in its replayability. Um, because the story has been laid before you, even when you start to play, you know, it's, the story is there, it's just a deck of cards. You may revisit the locations, but you will know what's going to happen in them, because when you lift a card, everything is always going to be exactly the same. Whatever somebody tells you is going to be exactly the same. So you know what to avoid, you know what to expect, you know where to go to get what in order to achieve whatever. That is, is not too bad for as long as you keep discovering things, but eventually, even after, I don't know, maybe um, 10 or 15 games, it will wear off. When you've reached the end of the adventure, then that's it. How, however, luckily, there are some expansions to keep the game going, so it can go on, which is absolutely great. Um, to give this game, and to bring this to a conclusion, to give this game some sort of comparative, it's things like, a, um, kind of like a, a game book from the 80s and the 90s or one of those point and click adventures that we used to play in the Atari or the Amiga games you know like the um, Indiana Jones or uh, Secret of Monkey Island that sort of adventures that, that's exactly how to play and the thing is that the game it really manages to bring the uh, turn to page so and so and then you find such and such or the uh, click here and then fight the guard to get the key that will take you to the room to the right that sort of spirit it does it extremely well i mean it's perfect it really is perfect but we have to get used to the idea that this game has a very finite lifespan just like a video game would have but except that in this case you, you will enjoy this with another three people around the table um, and uh, i understand that not everybody will feel comfortable with that but i'm quite happy with it because the quality of the experience that it provides it truly really is superb um you know any any game that leaves me and my group wanting to continue with the adventure just to know what's going to happen next uh, that that's a very good uh, that's a very good experience and, and the adventure this seriously the story is, is gripping it's the right combination and balance of explorations surprises new places creatures some really, really good characters. 
And with the visuals, I cannot stress this enough, the illustrations are just so absolutely gorgeous. I would love to see this game turn into a television series. It would be just absolutely amazing. So I would say if, if you are a role player and want a game that you can help you to introduce people to RPGs or simply to adventure and storytelling games, or you used to love point and click adventures, you cannot go wrong with this game, seriously. You, you can get it and be uh, safe that you will have an absolutely great experience. And with the expansions that have come out, uh, that's just absolutely great. So. Uh, get this game if you want some easy mechanics that fit with the theme and are learned very, very, very easily. A very compelling story with enough twists and turns to keep you going. And a storytelling game that you can teach anyone in minutes. It really is that simple. But please do not buy this game if you want a lot of replayability. If you're looking for a strategy or any kind of Euro gaming. Because then in this case, this game will not be for you. Thank you very, very much indeed for watching and listening. And please remember to subscribe to the video if you are listening to, to this in YouTube. Or subscribe to the podcast if you are hearing this in iTunes or whatever it is that you listen to your podcast. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you very soon. Indeed.